Well, good morning. I'm Pastor Gerard Delu from Morningstar Christian Chapel, and uh, I'd like to welcome all of you to uh, the celebration of life for Marty Egan. We're going to take some time today to pay tribute to her life and thank the Lord for the life that he gave her. You know, back on March 2nd, it was that it was a grieving day for family here. It was a glorious day in heaven as Marty received that crown of righteousness that was waiting for her from her Lord and Savior. So welcome, and uh, we're looking forward to spending this time with you. Let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Lord, we come before you here this morning, and, and thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to indeed uh, take just a few moments and reflect on and have memory of and an affection for a life that you gave, Lord, your daughter, Marty Ingham. And what a blessing it is to be able to take this time and not only pay tribute to her life, but to comfort each other in this time. Lord, your word promises that you will be the God of all comfort, and in that, you'll give us the ability to comfort one another. So may today be that for family, for friends, for all those that have gathered, and all those that are looking in on the live stream as well. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly armor will enter the land, the battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand, the battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. When the power of darkness comes in like a flood, the battle belongs to the Lord. We'll raise up a sander the power of His blood, the battle belongs to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. If you're weak, Worn from the fight, do not fear. The battle belongs to the Lord. Take courage, my friend, your redemption is near. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor. Power and strength to the Lord, and we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord, and we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Space that his love can reach. There's no place where we can find peace. There's no end to amazing grace. Take me in with your arms spread wide. 
take me in like an orphan child Never let go, never leave my side I am holding on to you I am holding on to you In the middle of the storm I'm holding on I am Love like this Oh my God to find I am overwhelmed With a joy divine Love like this Sets our hearts on fire I am Holding on to you I am Holding on to you in the middle of the storm. I'm holding on. I am. I am holding on to you. I am holding on to you in the middle of the storm. I'm holding on. I am. This is my resurrection song this is my hallelujah come this is why it's to you i run this is my resurrection song this is my hallelujah come this is why it's to you i run there's no space that his love can reach there's no place where we can find peace there's no end to amazing grace i am holding on to you i am holding on to you in the middle of a storm i'm holding on i am Holding on to you, I am Holding on to you In the middle of the storm I'm holding on, I am I am In the middle of the storm I'm holding on, I am Well, hello. Uh, those were two of uh, Marty's favorite favorite worship songs, and uh, thank you, uh, Brother Aaron. It was beautiful. Uh, I just wanted to share uh, one of the many special memories I have of my beloved bride, and uh, no one says it better than God. So, this is from First uh, Peter, uh, chapter three, verses one through four. Wives. Likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they, without a word, may be won by the conduct of their wives when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. Do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty. Actually, the NIV uses the word unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. And this is uh, one of the many things uh, that I remember about my beloved bride. And uh, it started early on in our marriage, even before uh, I came to my senses and accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord. Uh, it was uh, something that was always there, always present uh, underneath the surface, uh, but it was something that had a very strong impact on me. And uh, it's something I remember and always will, that uh, unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. Uh, I'm kind of an emotional guy, like a roller coaster up and down, but she was always very steady. And I believe that that was a part of that spirit 
that God put in her heart. And uh, I'm so grateful for that. And it's one of the things I'll always remember. Amen. Um, I am Kimberly Braze. I'm Marty's daughter. Um, I wanted to share some things with you today. Thank you, family and friends, for joining us today to help celebrate the life of my mama. I also want to thank you for all of your love, prayers, messages, cards, hugs, tears, and listening ears over these past few months. As I considered what to share with you all today, what to highlight about her life, what seems right to share in a time like this, and considering all the memories I hold so precious in my heart, I want to bring light to light something I saw in my mama, the way she loved. My mama had a good upbringing. Her parents worked hard to provide a nurturing home. She was a true California girl and loved the beach and being in the sun. You could tell because she had a beautiful golden tan all the time. She was a good student, even though she didn't like school that much. She always was involved in extracurricular activities that kept her busy, but there was still time for the occasional boyfriend. Music played a big role in our family. My mom played her mom played piano, and music was always a part of every gathering. My mom played piano, flute, and was in the color guard in two marching bands. She swam on the swim team. Her stroke was the butterfly. She attended college at Cal State Long Beach and earned a bachelor's in interior design. My mama learned how to sew from a young age and had a talent for stitching. My mom met the love of her life while on a double date with someone else. Come to find out, they both felt the same about each other on that date, and well, the rest is history as my mom would say. I remember my mom had a lot of sayings, especially when she was expressing road rage. For example, a car would come speeding by us and she would yell out, look at that hot dogger. <laughs> and me and my brother would just look at each other. What's a hot dogger? <laughs> she would say, when people would come weaving in and out of traffic, the squirrels are out today. <laughs> she always loved to make us laugh and I love that about her. She took safety very seriously, especially when we were driving. I will never forget how she reached through the side of the car to hold me back when we almost were in a very fatal crash. I thought, why would she do that? But that's the way she loved. She would do whatever she could to protect us. Her nicknames for me were Sweetie, Sugar Bums, and of course, my favorite, Monkey. <laughs> she loved to yell my name across the yard when it was time to come in for dinner. Except my dad cooked, which was a reason why they were a great pair. My mom would clean and my dad would cook and my mom would make sure we were clean. As any child does, I watched my mom and learned from her. I saw her navigate through many difficult situations I saw her face these with dignity, covering, love, compassion, and steadfastness. The commitment she made to all of us during these times was noticed by me. I hardly saw my mom cry. I knew she held it all in. She was not the emotional type. She saw a situation, she pulled up her bootstraps, and she did what needed to be done. I applaud my mom for not giving up and for recognizing her need for strength and where it came from. It came from Jesus, whom she loved. Growing up, my mom taught me how to respect people's decisions, whether we agreed with them or not. However, I became very concerned with my mom's decision to smoke cigarettes. We talked about it a lot, and we fought about it a lot. However, because of what she taught me, I respected her decision. Unfortunately, in 2004, she became very sick. She became diagnosed with COPD. But as a family, we knew that we loved our mom. We loved 
who she was for us, and that no matter what she chose to do, she always loved us with the best love she had. She did quit, and I was very proud of her at that moment. Unfortunately, the damage had been done to her lungs, and then over time, they deteriorated. However, she was like a bull, and she would fight hard to live as long as she could. She was strong-willed like a bull and stubborn like a mule, we would joke. When she made up her mind, that was it. She fought to maintain her health and continue to make sure we were all okay. But unfortunately, she has passed, but she lives with the Lord, and we are so grateful for her life with him. Even though she didn't feel good a lot of the time, she did whatever she could to, to show us how she loved us. After 2008, she had trouble walking. She wanted to go places, but she found it difficult. However, that did not stop her. She would visit family and friends, and she would take care of grand her grandchildren whenever she could. As she became more chair-bound and active, I saw how she would spend her time. She loved puzzles of all kinds, watching westerns, reading books, and most importantly, praying. Every time I would send her a prayer request, she would remember to ask me about it the next time we talked. It was a beautiful thing to see how my mom surrendered her life to Jesus by allowing him to touch her heart as she experienced these difficult situations. I saw how she allowed herself to pray first and not react. No one is perfect, and she knew this. But in her weakness, you could see the Lord's strength. I saw my mom struggle not being as mobile as she once was and having to ask for help. I could see that this caused her to rely on God's strength, and she allowed others to care for her. Thank you for listening to these wonderful memories that we have of my mom. Matthew, um, Marty was my mom, and uh, you know, I, I just, I'm not the best speaker, but um, just obviously missing her very much, um, and um, just listening to my sister um, kind of share some of those memories and the things about mom. I, I remember um, she was, uh, she, my sister mentioned the safety part, and I just remember as a kid, you know, the first thing when we got in the car was, put on your seatbelt, you know, and um, so that just kind of made me chuckle remembering, remembering that. And um, I mean, I, I didn't prepare anything, uh, but just um, she was, she was, she had a huge heart, huge heart. I mean, um, you know, she was always there, even um, in my, in my difficult times and in my re rebellious times, you know, she, she, um, she was not a, she didn't force me to, to, to do the right thing. I think she always um, liked to see people, um, you know, um, just do the right thing on their own, you know, as I, as I would say the Lord does, you know. Um, so um, that was a quality that maybe the Lord blessed her with, you know, and um, for me in particular, that was a, that was an encouragement because it made me actually listen to, to what she had to say and, um, and take it with, with, um, with some value, you know, and um, because I knew that she actually cared about me and, uh, you know, didn't want to, um, didn't want me to be a robot and wanted me to learn from my mistakes and, um, just, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. And, um, um, I wish I, I, I had something to, to prepare, but I've been really busy. I know that's not a good excuse, but mom, we love you. And, um, we're rejoicing with you actually, you know, and, um, that you're with the Lord now. And, um, I, I, I do, I, I feel you every day, mom. And, um, we love you. Love you, mom. I'm Linda Rubo, uh, Margaret's sister. Um, everybody, I think it was when she went to college, she wanted people to call her Marty, but she was always Margaret to me. Um, I'd like to begin with a poem. Dear sister, together on life's journey, we have traveled, you and me. 
sharing all the joys of life, keeping each other company, sharing lots of happy times, and sometimes sharing tears, always learning, always leaning on each other together through the years. And no matter where life leads us, dear sister, know it's true. It has been a joy to travel down the road of life with you. I will always rem remember all the happy times that growing up with Margaret. The camping trips as a family, the beach vacations to Balboa Island, sewing clothes together, cavalier trips, uh, me vi visiting you in New Hampshire and Maryland, and our long talks on the phone. I'd like to close with another poem that is written on a blanket that, that Margaret gave me a few years back. Sisters, more than friends, woven from the same fabric, each having a unique pattern, it is our common thread, which weaves our lives together by a bond that will never be broken. I love you and I miss you.
You fill up my uh, beautiful seeing all of those memories in, in photo through that slideshow. Um, it's been my privilege to know Bill and Marty and their kids for a lot of years. As a matter of fact, uh, Bill and I have ministered together for well over 20 years. And uh, I remember so often when we would have sound checks and those kind of things for practices for our worship team that uh, very often Marty would be, be sitting there sort of off on the side somewhere just listening in. And uh, it was always so evident, uh, the, the connection that those two had and uh, just that love uh, that was there that, that was deeply understood. And uh, I got to know and... and to, to love Marty over the years, and I, I always knew that if you ever needed a straightforward answer, go to Marty. Uh, it, no matter what your question was, or even if you really didn't have a question, <laughs> uh, she'd have uh, just that very simple, straightforward answer, not a lot of mincing of words, and I always appreciated that about her, and I'm sure for the kids that, as they shared, uh, being raised that way, uh, what, a, what a blessing. I'd like to take a few moments before we close here today to uh, talk about probably one of the most important aspects of Marty's life, and it was already mentioned in some of the things that were shared, and that was their relationship with Jesus. Very evident, and uh, I'm sure like so many of us, uh, over time, uh, the Lord beginning to woo her into that relationship with Him. But then a point came in her life where she said one very simple and straightforward word, and that was yes. Yes, Lord, I want you to be my Savior, my Lord, and I'm determined to walk with you from this point on. Because of that, Marty is now experiencing something that we all long for. I, I very often think about uh, at, at memorial services, what emotions are appropriate, and I think they all are, grieving, sadness, sorrow. But I think for us as Christians and born-again believers, one emotion that's probably pretty accurate is jealousy, <laughs> because she's there where we want to be. You know, Paul, at the end of his life, towards the end of his life, wrote this to his protege, Timothy, and I think it's so fitting uh, for what Marty is experiencing now and what, for what we long for. But in, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning in verse 6, it says this, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure it is, is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all 
who have loved his appearing. On that date in March, when Marty breathed her last here on earth, she breathed her first in heaven. And I know that she had a lot of trouble over time with taking those breaths. But can you imagine how clear and beautiful and exhilarating that first breath of heaven must have been like? And in that moment, looking into the eyes of her loving Savior, she received the crown of righteousness that is promised for all of us that Paul was talking about he so longed for because she too had fought the good fight. She finished the race. She kept the faith. And I know it's difficult for us. Even today, all these months later, the, the, the grieving is still very real. The mourning will continue. And it's always too soon, isn't it, to have to say goodbye to someone. We always long for one more conversation, one more moment with that person. That's what makes death so final and so hard to deal with. And the Bible calls it the last enemy. It's the last thing that Jesus will put under his feet. And boy, do we all long for that day when there is no more death and dying. But for us, and as it was for Marty, There's that passage in uh, Matthew chapter 15, I'm sorry, John chapter 15, where Jesus talks about being the vine and we the branches. That's where our life comes from. And Jesus makes an interesting statement that those branches that don't bear fruit will be cut off and thrown aside, eventually burned up in the fire. But even the branches that bear fruit, the vine dresser comes along and he prunes them. I was so mindful with my own mother's passing, and I think it was probably pretty similar with Marty. You know, the day we're born, and especially when we're born again, God begins pruning. He he snips away at our fallen flesh, at those areas in our lives that don't do us any good, that don't belong. And he keeps snipping more and more of that away until finally like it was for Marty on that day, there's that final cut of those pruning shears and all the flesh is done and gone. Now the only thing left is spirit. And that's when Jesus says, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your rest. What a glorious promise we have. And Marty experienced that and is now experiencing it. We can't even imagine. And yet we long for that day when we'll see her again. For all of us gathered here, I do want to say that if you haven't, for whatever reason, said the same word to Jesus as Marty did all those years ago, and that was that word, yes, yes, Lord, I would encourage you, let Marty's passing be a stimulant, if you will, in your life, be that motivation for you to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. There is no better tribute that you could pay to Marty's life than to get to know the Savior that she loved and walked with and shared with her family and with her church friends. And we all got to have that fellowship, that sweet fellowship together because of Jesus. And if you want to know the Lord, it's it's really simple. Just invite him in. Acknowledge your sin. Realize that you need a savior and say yes to him. Be my Lord, be my savior. Save me from my own sins. And Jesus gives us the promise then that crown of righteousness, eternal life. I once heard it said that When someone passes away, especially a Christian, it's like dropping a pebble into a still pond. That first little initial drop just brings a little bloop into the water. But as you continue to watch, the rivulets start to then go from that point and continue on all the way to the edge of the pond. 
That's Marty's life. And her passing was like that. The Lord just dropping that little pebble in the pond. And for all of family and friends and everyone else, her life, her influence is having that effect. Let her walk with the Lord inspire you and get to know the Jesus that she did. Let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful for the life, the moments, the time that you not only gave Margaret Ingham, Marty, but the time that you gave her with her husband, with her children, her grandchildren, with so many friends and family members, even as she herself grew up under the roof of her own parents and in her own home. Your hand of blessing was there, Lord. It is so evident. And in that time when it was right and right, you called this daughter of yours to walk with you, to be born once again into your love, and to have those days, months, and years to spend in sweet fellowship with you and with those she loved. So today we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to have this reflection, this tribute, these memories, and may they continue. My prayer, Lord, is that you would be with the family in the days and weeks to come, and that all of us would stay in touch, bear each other's burdens, be there for one another, and let your love so shine from all of us to our hearts. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. my chains of sin and shame and you covered me with grace you meant my life with your holy fire and you covered me with grace you are the hand that reaches out to save and I am set free, oh, I am set free, oh, it is for freedom that I am set free. You broke chains of sin and shame and you covered me with grace you meant my life with your holy fire and you covered me with grace you are the hand that reaches out to save I am set free, oh, I am set free, oh, it is for freedom that I am set free. And yes, Lord, grateful for your grace and for your love and yes Lord we are grateful for your grace and for your love yes Lord we are grateful for and for your love and yet Lord we are grateful for your grace and for Oh
I am set free. Oh, I am set free. Oh, it is for freedom that I am set free. I am set free. Set free, oh, it is for freedom that I am set.